creating or, or and coming uh, and having a property owner come in with with bad feelings amongst the neighbors that's not a good way to start as a new neighbor in a, in a neighborhood nor for habitat for humanity I'm sure I'm sure they prefer to go spots where they're welcomed and where there are opportunities and where people don't object so I think this was one where perhaps council erred in in uh, declaring this property surplus when we did without adequate consideration I for one will admit I have not done a site visit to, to verify either what's being said or not I've been looking at my Google Earth as well but I think this is a situation where we can we can stop the process work with habitat to try and find another location uh, but I think this perhaps was uh, was one that shouldn't proceed thank you councillor black no I'm sorry oh it was Columbus my apologies Mayor, I concur with the uh, previous two councillors who spoke on this. It looks like the rock's been there since 1945, I heard. So it's been used as a route to the park for all those people that live on that street for over 70 years. So I'd have to concur with the, the motion. Further discussion on the motion? The motion is for refusal. I'll call the question. Those in favour? That is carried. Uh, just a question before we move on. To staff, the application we, we just dealt with is an application from Norfolk County or is it from the Habitat on behalf of the county? In other words, the bottom line is who paid for this application? Mr. Baird, please. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, as part of the process leading up to uh, Habitat's application, uh, it was agreed that st uh, as part of the conditions that were mentioned, uh, they were to get the proper zoning in place as well as, I believe it was permit, permit ready. So they uh, did their homework, their due diligence to make sure that uh, you know, everything was in place before it could happen. And as part of the, their request to Council was that staff, the county, would undertake the, uh, the exercise that we've brought before you tonight. So they did not pay for the application? No, Just wanted to check on that. It might have been something if they had we would consider, but that's up to you folks. Thank you very much. And uh, we have one more um, public meeting. I would like to go right to that. And I am on, did I not give that to you? Yes, I did. No? Yeah, you got that. Okay, I am on page 127, Council. No, I'm not. I'm on 129. My apologies. This is Staff Report DCS 1845. An application has been received to amend the special provision 15. Point five four five of the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw 1Z 2014 on the subject law lands referred to as Block 5 to permit a maximum height of six stories for a senior's apartment and also to amend the CSC Zone Block 6 to add a special provision to permit a maximum height of 30 meters for a hotel banquet center. 2079095 Ontario Limited and Agent MHBC planning has put forth the application affects the lands described as the new Lakeshore Road. You still here, Matt? This is your report, and we would like you to give it to us, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have received uh, two zoning bylaw amendment applications that are before council tonight. One is uh, to increase the height of a senior's apartment condo, and the other is for an increase in height to a future hotel slash convention center slash golf course, pro shop uh, slash bar. I could go on. There's a whole bunch of uh, really interesting uses that are being proposed within uh, these two buildings. Both of these buildings are located in the Dover Coast community, um, which is uh, one uh, very highly anticipated uh, expansion of this community on the east uh, northeast side of it um, we haven't received any public input on this application uh, but planning staff have reviewed the policy of what's being proposed and um, are very supportive 
of, of what's uh, being put before us. Uh, it's uh, consistent with the PPS. It conforms with policies of our official plan and planning staff uh, support this. This is just a rendering of what the uh, proposed hotel slash convention center is like. And um, I'll defer uh, the details of that to, to the applicant and owner who are present today. Plan staff recommend approval of this report. Thank you. Uh, this time I won't forget and ask Council for questions to staff. Councillor Wells, we'll start with you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, just a quick question. Uh, we, this application looks after both, uh, both uh, requests, that is the senior apartment as well as the convention center. Am I correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor. That's correct. They are currently on the same property. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Vaughan? Matt, on that line, are these both part of Block B? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, they are they are part of a draft draft plan approved subdivision. Um, however, one of the stipulations with moving forward with this these uh, this section of this uh, community will be the connection okay. uh, of Dover Coast Boulevard to yes. Highway Six. So we are still waiting on some feedback from the province. We're very close uh, to having a design completed for that connection. And once that's uh, completed, the owner can move forward with, um, um, with securities and, and, and the like, and, and we can move on with development in this area. Thank you. Councillor Black. I, or, con I think congratulations are in order. That, uh, is it true that Port Dover will be the first place in Norfolk County to receive a roundabout? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Uh, the design of the connection of Do Dover Coast Boulevard to Highway 6 is proposed to be a, a large roundabout. That's correct. Okay, well, I must say to Councillor Wells, I'm, I'm jealous because I wanted it to happen in Simcoe, but that's fine. I, am, I, th I know I'm making light of this, but I think that that is a very important thing uh, for, for traffic control, for traffic calming, for the movement of traffic, uh, I'm very happy to see it because there are more benefits to have the roundabouts than the stop and go traffic, including the benefits to the environment and, and vehicles uh, spewing out all the exhaust fumes. Any other questions to staff? I see the applicant, uh, Mr. John Lennox, is here waiting patiently. Is there an agent from MHGI? I thought so. In attendance. So I'm going to ask if there's anyone in attendance at this time that wishes to speak in favor of the amendments to come for the podium. And as always, the applicant or agent always is allowed to go first. Thank you. Good evening. I'm, my name is Stephanie Murdich, and I'm here with MHBC Planning on Stephanie? behalf of the applicant. Murdich. Ste Stephanie? Yes, that's correct. Got it. Go ahead, Steph. Okay, I will keep it brief. Matt did a good job just introducing the proposal, so I'll just provide a little bit more detail, and I'm here to answer any questions as well. So as men uh, Matt mentioned, it's part of the larger Dover Coast community. Um, so this map here shows the two properties. So on the top of the, site, or the map here, you'll see the hotel and convention center site. And on the bottom of the image here, you will see the apartment site. Um, so there are a few things that the surrounding areas um, is the golf course. Oops. So the golf course community. Um, so the golf course is actually located on the right side of the image. There's some future residential proposed to the south, uh, adjacent to the apartment side, on the opposite side of Dover Coast Boulevard. And uh, there will be future residential as well on the opposite side of Highway 6 in the future. And it's anticipated that there will be some additional commercial development adjacent to the medical center in the future. And as Matt mentioned, uh, these are two blocks on part of a plan of subdivision that is currently working through the process of registration. So we'll start here with the proposed hotel and convention center. Uh, so the proposed height is six stories, uh, which I'll get into in a minute. It's proposed to have 80 rooms, and it also is planned to have 40 additional rooms in the future through an addition. Total of 288 parking spaces are proposed and the vehicle access will be from Dover Coast Boulevard. And as we talked about, the, uh, the roundabout has to be worked through and uh, we're on the way to that right now. 
Uh, so several amenities are proposed as part of this development, which are really exciting for the overall community. So large convention space will be located within the hotel. There's also proposed to be a bar and restaurant in the building. Um, and we'll, it will also contain the golf course pro shop for the adjacent golf course. So this hotel will provide needed overnight accommodation in Port Dover and for the surrounding community and also help to support tourism in the area. And this is just another rendering of the uh, hotel and convention center. Next is the proposed apartment complex. So again, we're looking at a six-story apartment building, primarily intended for uh, senior living, with a total of 112 units. There will be 188 parking spaces with a level of underground providing 88 spaces and 84 covered spaces. The access for this site is from both Dover Coast Boulevard and Barrett Court. And this will provide, again, a an offer of uh, different housing choice and apartment-style living for residents of the area. And this is another visual of the site. And uh, both of these uh, height increases will also allow for views of the Dover Coast area, including the golf course and views of Lake Erie as well, which brings me to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment, as Matt mentioned, for both of these is for an increase in height. So uh, the two properties are zoned differently. The first one is the uh, CSC zone for the hotel. So the current permitted height is 11 meters and we are requesting an increase to 30 meters to allow for that six story hotel site. And the apartments are currently zoned R5, so the residential zone with a special provision. And we are requesting an increase in height from four stories to six stories. And the zoning bylaw amendment application is also proposing to lift the holding provision for these properties. So in summary, it meets the intent of both the official plan and the zoning bylaw, and the proposed height increases are compatible with the adjacent land uses, which is the overall Dover Coast community. It's being planned uh, as a comprehensive plan of subdivision, and uh, the immediate uses will be the golf course, the medical center, and commercial uses, and the residential uses surrounding it will be buffered by both Highway 6 and the Dover Coast Boulevard. Um, the proposal is part of the larger community, and uh, will contribute necessary accommodation and amenities and help to create a cre complete community within Dover Coast. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Stephanie. Is there any questions for this presenter? Councillor Wells and then Columbus, please. Aaron, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. My question is pretty simple. If this uh, is approved uh, for the two units, the apartment complex as well as the uh, Benson Center, when might you be thinking in terms of when this might begin? Right. I knew that question was going to come up. Well, I'm glad I didn't surprise <laughs> you. So, give me one second here to just flip to my uh, presentation here. But uh, the first one will be the uh, hotel site, John, if that's correct. Um, so, looking at construction uh, this fall, uh, if approvals go according to schedule, um, in about four months of construction period uh, would be put us into the late fall. So... And then the, Oops, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the apartments will be um, dependent on sales, and as Matt mentioned as well, everything is dependent on this roundabout and getting that resolved with the MTO. To be determined. Councillor yeah. Walsh, continue. Yes, and during your uh, presentation, you made mention several times of the proposed uh, medical center. Yes. Do we have any idea when that uh, proposed medical center might uh, come to pass? So again, we're working through the uh, registration of the plan of subdivision right now, um, which is critical to getting that wellness center. Um, but we're, right now we're working with staff to get that moving forward. So I don't think we have a concrete timeline at this point. But. Through you, Mr. Mayor, as soon as we can. <laughs> But tonight we'll, we'll deal with this application, but I, I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. It all ties in, doesn't it? Any other questions? Well, sure, Councillor Columbus. My question was asked by Councillor Wells. Any other questions for this young lady? Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luca. Uh, through you to the deputation, you, you referred to these as apartments, but you did mention the selling of the apartments. So is this more of condos? Correct. Yes, it's proposed for 112 condominium units. Okay, and what's the age restriction you have to be to be a senior? I don't think that's been identified at this point, um, and I'm, I don't think it's officially just for seniors. That's just the intended target market, but there won't be, if I'm correct, John, there won't be a requirement for you to be a senior to live here. It's just the intended target market. Okay, thank you. I don't think Mr. Lennox would apply, would be eligible for senior <laughs> apartment. Any other questions? 
You could have a seat. There may be something that will come back to you at the end. Okay, thank you. When we get there. Thank you, Stephanie. Is there anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak in support of this application? Is there anyone in attendance tonight that wishes to speak in opposition or in general to the application? Council, anything further? I would then need a motion to Councillor Height has moved and Councillor Wells has second that we close this public meeting. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. There is a recommendation on page 129. What is your wish? Councillor Wells? For approval. Councillor Columbus has seconded that. I'm going to read it quickly. Councillor Wells has moved Councillor Columbus to second at the application of John Lennox, 169. Lakeshore Road in Port Dover affects the lands described as lots 14 to 16, concession 1. We're in the geographic township of Woodhouse, Norfolk County. This is the men Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw 1Z-2014. The file numbers are there in front of you, recommended for approval for reasons as set out in Report 1845. And that public in input has not been received for this application, therefore will not be considered as part of this recommendation. You've heard the motion, discussion on the motion. I hear none. I'll ask the question if... How many are in favor of this motion? It's carried. Thank you very much. Matt, Pam, Mr. Baird, and your planning folks, thank you for all the good work you do in bringing forward these planning reports. I am now uh, going to say that we have no uh, staff reports, discussion items. Are there any reports of council? Members this evening to report on committees that you sit on. I will now go to bylaws as they start on page 183 through to 197. It's been moved by Councillor Height and seconded by Councillor Sonnenberg that bylaws 30Z 2018, 32Z 2018, and 33Z 2018, and bylaw 30. Sorry, 2018-30 and bylaw 2018-31 and bylaw 6 OP 2018 be passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, and affixed with the corporate seal. Yes, Councillor Bach. Discussion. I did have a, a question for you to staff on yes. uh, bylaw number 2018-31. Uh, it was the amendment that regulates parking. I don't know if Chris can answer this or not, and perhaps I should have, I guess I forgot to give him a call. I think, I think Andy, uh, if you may, the clerk would like to uh, answer your question on that. Go okay. ahead. Okay, and it's, it's just, I'm wondering, there's, it looks like the, uh, the taxi stand's being eliminated on Peel Street, and I'm wondering why. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, <laughs> Council may have noticed the new uh, courtesy cabs uh, driving so, around town, nice shiny and new ones. Part of the change in that is there's been a change in ownership, so there's new owners of courtesy cab, and they requested uh, that since their major um, call center is in Brantford that they continue to do the call center in Brantford, so there's no usage for that building and no need for the parking spot any longer. Okay, good answer. Thank you. And a good question. Well done. Any other discussion? On the bylaw motion for approval, if not those in favor? Carried. Other business? Marlene Watson, I want to thank you for filling in tonight for Lee Robinson. Thank you. Do you have anything you wish us to know? Not at this time, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Marlene Miranda, Mr. Cridlin. Nothing this evening. Mr. Andy Grizel. Sir. Mr. CAO, David Cribbs. I do have two items, Your Worship. Uh, firstly, as an announcement, all Norfolk County staff uh, are encouraged to wear a hockey jersey on Thursday to commemorate uh, the tragedy that occurred in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. 
uh, almost a week ago. Uh, so we'll be doing that on Thursday and that will, uh, Norfolk County paramedics are wearing uh, green and yellow ribbons. Um, those individuals, there are some individuals who have, uh, for health and safety reasons, have to wear specific clothing and they can't participate, but all others are encouraged to do so. And so I would imagine min many members of the public will see that. As a second item, and this is specifically to our elected officials, uh, AMO is coming up in August. Uh, officially, we've received notification that uh, the provincial government is at this point in time entertaining requests for meetings with cabinet ministers uh, on topics of our choosing. And uh, to that end, I do put forth the proposition to members of uh, county council that uh, my office in particular would be interested in hearing from you as to any specific topics you would like us to attempt to uh, address with the provincial government. I can tell you as a default, um, in light of this evening's vote, it it may or may not be premature to attempt to discuss the hub. Uh, we are talking about August, um, so it seems to me that would be an appropriate time to broach the issue with a number of ministries. Um, I also think the causeway to Long Point would be an appropriate uh, topic of conversation. Uh, the Ontario Building Code, specifically with respect to farm dwellings usage and or occupancy, we, you don't have the staff report. We haven't fully turned our minds to how we might go about doing that. but. Of course, we're asking for several months down the road, and I think we'll have our thoughts straight by that time. And, uh, and in addition to the topic of gas wells, of course, and uh, the health reporting mechanism um, through Ms. Mar uh, Miranda's area. Uh, so there, those are four things staff have identified as reasonable um, items for conversation with the provincial government, but of course we work for you. and. Uh, we do have a relatively limited time frame, so I would ask if you could ideally get back to my office with suggestions, uh, requests or instructions uh, by close of business next week, um, next Friday that is. Uh, that would be the ideal, and I thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Baird. Thank you, Ms. Darlington. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Johnson, thank you. Councillor Oliver. Councillor Columbus, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to add to that list, Dave, uh, the issue of bunkhouses and the limitations with MOE and the fact that it takes two years to get the permits in place for for uh, seasonal housing, if you could add that along with the building code. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that tomorrow night, the, the Mayor and I are attending the Delhi Chamber of Commerce Awards Night event. I understand that uh, Mr. Barrett and Diane Finley will be there too. And I uh, just wanted to mention the winners. It's Ron Klein, who sits on our museum board and also was the fundraiser chair for the Delhi Public Library project. He's the uh, Citizen of the Year. Danielle Ward, she is the Junior Citizen of the Year. She uh, won the uh, singing contest somewhere here locally. And she's contributed much to the community of Delhi. Dave Ward, her dad, has actually been selected as the Corporate Business Award winner. He contributes a lot to our local sports and schools. He's been there for over 40 years. And Fernley Flowers and VLG Insurance are being uh, were nominated and received the award for Long Time Serving Business Award. I think some of them have been there since 1937. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Geisens, please. Nothing this evening. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, I had several questions for Public Works, but since she's not there, I'll defer these until when, when uh, Lee is back. But I do have a question about uh, Norfolk Street North, and that's Highway 24, North Highway 3. That's correct. Great big potholes. Beat to death. Will we be fixing that? Do we know a year that is in the capital budget? You're going to answer that? Go ahead, Councillor Block. It's a question I've asked, and that's connecting link. So I've asked Lee to put that into the connecting link, and she said that she will, and I think the next go-round, um, that would be from Davis Street to the end of um, the four lanes, because we did do it all, all the way up to the four lanes. And that, actually, there was a piece of it that was uh, owned by the county, and the rest of it was the province from the 13th going north. Um, but that, that was done in 1969 uh, when it was first put in, in the underpass. 
and uh, uh, there is no underground there, so it's just it's shave and pave. So connecting link. So that's done by the province. Yeah. Well, it's, it has to be applied by us. We have to apply for that money. Will we be applying for that ASAP? She's, she's I don't know how much more suspension work I can put on my vehicles, Mr. Mayor. That's why I'm asking yeah. these questions. Yeah. Well, I asked her that, and she said yes. Okay. They are applying for it. Okay. Because even the garage out going out of town posts that he can fix your pothole problem, but not the potholes. So I, I think he, even they're referring to that, Mr. Mayor, because probably all the suspension shops in town are, are, are having a ton of business right now. So, as you guys are aware, the Marsh Hare, or the Rat Supper, is coming up on the 18th. Okay, and I'm going to get to that shortly. It's a, a delicacy, I suppose, to some. Right? But, it, but it's a packed event held by the Long Point County uh, Lions Club. Uh, so, there's, being a counselor over the years, I, I've learned some wisdom from my fellow counselors. Oh that, my God, I'm listening. That piece of, the piece of wisdom that I've been living in the last week came from Councillor Wells when he referred to council as septage shields. That, that's what I've been living because the lions, who some here might be going to the rat supper, okay, have approached county at my request about building a pavilion in the park, in Port Rowan, the skate park. Okay, it, the, their request has been refused. This I only know secondhand because the Lions came to me and said, why? Because apparently staff went to the Lions and said it was a liability issue that they couldn't build the pavilion. This, this obviously upset the people because you have members that are 30-year contractors that have retired from the profession. We actually have a retired building inspector who worked for Norfolk County for years. We have cabinet makers. Basically, we have people who can make a pavilion. They, most of them, I think, built the one in Port Rowan that's the farmer's market. But now they can because it's a liability issue. So they weren't very happy with Noel since Councillor Height was the one who brought it up. So then I asked them, well, you know, like, do you guys still give them checks, give county checks? And they go, well, of course. I said, well, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe it's liable to get spent somewhere else. I don't understand why we're refusing help from service groups. Just like the hub that we spoke of earlier. We're not engaging the YMC, YMCA. We're not engaging these not-for-profits. To, to me, it seems all we're doing is asking for a check and then spending the money. Here we have a group of people that will build us something, and we're saying no because of liability? I, I can't even fathom that idea. We pay for insurance. Councillor Height, um, could I ask Mr. Baird on your behalf, or on our pavilions, do you know, not allowed in the... Through the mayor to the county council and Councillor Height, Yes, um, I, we have met a few times now with the Long Point Lions, and an original plan was the Lions Club did come out and said they would like to be hands-on in building these pavilions. Since then, um, this council has uh, passed the capital budget, and the capital budget we feel are sufficient, sufficient funds to build both the pavilion as well as the outdoor rink. So we did mention that at the last Lions meeting, that as far as having um, Lions members come in, swing hammers, run backhoes, that sort of thing, that's where the liability comes in. We are still looking at, there, I believe there is, correct me, Councillor Height, there is a structural engineer or a building inspector there who could help with the permitting and stuff like that. That's still there. I, I don't think we've turned their help down. We have asked for no money. The county council has given us money for that, but we are trying to stick handle around how to have these individuals be uh, hands-on in this project. And I will admit it, it is hard to have a group of um, people work on a county project without supervision. If somebody gets hurt, that's where a lot of the liability come, comes in. So that's what we're dealing dealing with now. So what Councillor Heights says is is right, but there are, there are rational, uh, rational reasons behind why it's that way, unfortunately. Just before we continue, my question to Mr. Baird was, 
Pavilions aren't outlawed as being built to building code in Norville County, are they? I'm sorry, are they permitted to be are built? Are they a permitted uh, structure or are they outlawed? No, no, absolutely not. They, they, they're built. We have many of them. They're routinely built. No problem. There's a building permit required because it's bigger than okay. 100 square feet. I misunderstood you. Thank you. I, misunderstood. I thought you said that county wouldn't allow pavilions. And I think they have to go through the building permit just like uh, any structure. So um, thank you for right, that. And, uh, like, I don't know. I guess it doesn't make any sense to me. Here you have people willing to help, skilled, qualified people, and you're refusing it. Right? I don't know that seems counterproductive to me. Okay, so, but the fund doesn't stop there yet, Mr. Mayor. I'm still septic shield counselor of the week. So I'm receiving calls from people that want to come into my harbor. They want to be able to park their boats in town and walk into the town. Well, I don't, I don't think Mr. Cribs is aware, but I think last spring I had the owner who owns the docks at the end in front of the boathouse restaurant offer those to county. He, he sold his marina. He's not interested in paying the $12,000 a year for the insurance and offers them to county and county refuses it because it's a liability issue because apparently the platform and docks aren't built to, built to county code. So, like, I, I don't even get it why, like, people are trying to do things in the community and they can't. Liability, I don't know how many millions we pay each year for insurance. And it doesn't cover anything? I'm confused and I'd like to know how we fix this moving forward because uh, I don't know what to tell people. Don't offer us any help. We can't do it. Uh, are you saying that there's people who want to donate dockage? The area space, to? absolutely. I, I would suggest you have them come and speak to council and bring a proposal forward. I, 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 I think anybody's entitled to that. I, and again, I, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm just saying, what can we do? Boy. Mm -hmm. If you want to make this county better and we can work together and do that, bring it, bring it right to that microphone. Okay. That's my suggestion. Be glad to listen and see what can be done. That, that's my only suggestion. I, I don't know, staff, if that's out of line or... Wouldn't that... Okay, continue. Okay. Yep, no. Uh, but I'm, I'm still in shield mode on to topic number three, uh, Mr. Keep, Mayor. Keep flying. And that is Norfolk County's purchasing policy. I can tell you now, I've had three different contractors that I've just met in, bumped into into town, and they're all complaining about it. The reason why they're complaining is they're losing business because they're not the lowest bidder. And what happens is they get called back to clean up the mess from the lowest bidder. This is three different ones that have contacted me in the last two weeks. And what's happening, and I, I can see, I don't know how to fix the problem, but I can see how it becomes a problem. You have a, a contractor who comes in at $50, the market rate is $70. So what's happening is I understand that the contractor at $50 takes eight hours to do a four-hour job. Pretty good deal for him because he's eliminated his competition. And how do you prevent that? I'm not sure how that works. But I, I know three different contractors and three different businesses something's upsetting some people here. Right? I, I, I can only say to you, this situation, if there is, seems to be, as you suggest, that we are getting low bidders that we're accepting and they're not doing the work properly, getting paid, walking away, job's done and then we have to hire contracts, I think we need to bring those specifics to staff because I don't think if we are using bidders and awarding bids to people that can't do the job right, we often see in our reports, so-and-so has done work for the county before. Um, so I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. no. I, I think if these are serious problems, I think we need to, to get some details and have staff look into this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all only, yeah, you know, my only response. I, uh, yeah, I most hope certainly. that's not happening yeah, at the time. Like one, one of the things what I'm, I'm looking for tonight is when the purchasing policy review will be coming forward. I can't answer that. Uh, mm -hmm. Shelley, do you care to 
Through the mayor, uh, we're currently working on phase two of the purchasing policy revisions. We hope to have that before council probably the end of June. We're just undergoing a number of staffing recruitment that's delayed that a little bit and a memo was coming forward to council to provide you th with that update. So this is phase two after the phase one review that we conducted in December. Um, and with respect to the issues that you've identified, the county has a, a very uh, detailed vendor performance process. So if you could provide those details, we'll do the necessary investigation. Okay, but uh, shouldn't you have stop checks in there? Shouldn't you say to do something takes four hours? Okay. And if the contractor comes in and takes six and a half hours? Through the mayor, we have a number of processes in place, but without the specifics and looking at the file, I can't answer that question tonight, but I'm happy to investigate that for you. Okay, appreciate that. Can help. Uh, the moral of the story is don't hire somebody by the hour, hire them to do a job. You know, that's the simple way around it. That was it, Mr. Mayor. Thank I you. thank you for those, and I uh, certainly welcome you bringing forth any of those uh, that we can have a look at and deal with, absolutely. Uh, Councillor Sonnenberg. Okay, Councillor Wells. And Councillor Black. This is really odd. Councillor Brunton. I have a couple little items. I will be very short. As you know, I always am. Uh, all right, well, just give me a second. Okay. Okay. Um, I will be attending Thursday. Mr. Lee was here. He mentioned that uh, George Elliott Clark also will be in Port Dover. It's going to be a great event, believe me. Uh, also, I wanted to say that this Saturday evening is the famous Langton figure skating carnival. I will be attending the 7.30 because I know that Councillor Geisens will be there. I always see him. He always buys me a coffee and a french fry. It is a tremendous carnival. <laughs> it is a tremendous carnival. So I'm looking forward to that. And finally, uh, some of us will be bowling for Big Brothers, Big Sisters this Sunday. Up above, if you got us. For a couple of bucks you want to add to uh, my um, pledge sheet, uh, I'll be glad to shake you down. Other than that, um, I have nothing else. Okay, that's it for this evening. I'm going to do the confirming bylaw quickly. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Sonnenberg, seconded by Councillor Wells, the bylaw 2018 32. This is a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of this council of Norfolk County at this meeting held on the 10th day of April 2018 be signed by the mayor and clerk and affixed with our corporate seal those in favor we are now adjourned it's carried thank you well, like